This is a tale of how a struggling artist ignored all their music production responsibilities and their painting projects to pursue a three week long obsession with a cell phone mount. This story will have big heights, deep lows. It's like Jordan Peterson always says. This isn't just about the phone mount, it's about mastering even our smallest domains. Find some time to watch this when no one's around. Put the kids in the closet, lock the key, don't do that, and get ready. I didn't mean to go down this rabbit hole. It started off because I needed a camera arm so that I could record B-roll. Sometimes when I'm working and I'm doing something on the counter or workstation, I need the camera up here so that I can use both hands, right? B-roll footage is just footage that's not the person talking. So like right now, this is B-roll footage. So I needed a good camera arm. Well, I ran into a bunch of issues. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you why I printed each one of these and tell you the limitations and the things I like about it. And then I'm gonna tell you how I created my own cradle that works on any of these that's better than all of these. Stay with me. Let's start off with this one. So this is the king of the arms on Maker World. It seems like it, but it requires hardware. I don't like the fact that I have to buy extra hardware for this. Although that does make it sturdier in some ways in these joints, it also creates a lot of weight and now we get a lot more rocking. We already have that issue with having a phone up here. Plus this joint down here is pretty weak. I think if this was more stable down here, this wouldn't rock so much. That being said, it is very strong and it can support quite a bit of weight. And it's got a really great pivot here that will allow for a lot of different directions. There's also an extension you can get for this that will work for an iPad. This one is quite interesting. I love the fact that it has two supports on the bottom and has one on the top, but I do not like this phone carrier. It's a very clever design in that you push really hard right here and on this side, and it'll open it a little bit and you can squeeze your phone in there, but it's very limited to how wide the phone can be. And it's a very precarious way of doing it. Plus there's not a great joint here. And so you don't get a lot of directionality in that. That being said, I love these 3D printed bolts. They work really well, quite well. And out of all these stands, I think this one, even though it does jiggle a little bit, it's not as bad as the other ones. This next one has a really interesting design in the cradle. The designer made it so that as the phone gets cradled, the connections on the side lock into place based on the weight of the phone. It's got a little gearbox mechanism. The downside of this is that these joints, for me to rearrange these or to position these differently, I've got to loosen up two sides of it instead of just one. And because of how this is oriented, it's the most jiggly of all the, the cell phone arms. So if you're working at your desk and you're typing on your keyboard, it is gonna jiggle like crazy. That being said, if I was rotating the phone into a horizontal position, which is usually how I shoot video, I might have the problem of it slipping out and falling down. Lastly, I've got this little arm here, which I actually like quite a bit. When this goes down, those lock in like that. So it's a very clever design as far as engineering. However, it can slip out if you're putting it into a horizontal position. And this one doesn't even allow you to change it to a horizontal or landscape position. So this one, it's cute, but you'd have to be in vertical mode just about all the time. Okay, so what is it we're trying to go after? What are my requirements for a great 3D printed cell phone holder arm thing? Nailed it. First and foremost, it's gotta hold phones of different sizes, and it's gotta hold phones of different sizes with different size cases. Two is it's gotta be modular, so I should be able to add arms, add extensions, add length to it when I want. Three is I don't want it to jiggle too much. Four is I don't wanna to have to buy hardware for it. And I really prefer the supports and arms and necessary pieces that I print to not require any supports, meaning the scaffolding, right? There's a lot of great things about these. And so rather than redesigning from the ground up, I thought, why don't I just redesign the cradle itself? Take all the best ideas I have from these and redesign it. And so that is what I concentrated on and that is what I've done. So first I took all the different designs that I printed as well as some that are online as well that I didn't get to printing. And I tried to take inspiration from different parts and think, what do I like about different things? 
This one's not gonna work. Having this sideways, it might slip out. So it needs to be stronger than that. The grip of the phone can't be dependent on just the phone's weight. It can't be something like this because that's only gonna fit some devices and you'd have to make multiple of those. This is a cute one that I found that's on a little tripod. And I like this design because it has requires a rubber band, even though that is one extra part, most people have that. And it does hold relatively well, but it's not super tight. But I like the fact that it comes back afterwards. So we're gonna keep that in mind. Here's another design that actually works quite well. It does allow for a big phone. It is nice and deep in here. And it's got a threaded auger that positions this and tightens it up. However, it's not very attractive. It uses a lot of filament and the center of gravity is gonna be on one side. I don't like that. This might be one of my favorite. I love the ball joint here because it gives a lot more flexibility. It adjusts for different size phones, but it's not very deep. That's the problem. So if I had a case on a thick phone, that may not fit. This one we talked about already. This one we talked about already. This actually doesn't have much play to it. Um, you can get extensions for these. The designer did keep that in mind. So that could work, but I don't like how small this area is. It doesn't hold for wide phones or phones with cases. And the TPU in here, these inserts really aren't necessary. These are soft rubber that you put in here. You print out in TPU and that's just really not necessary because most phones have cases on them anyway. Here's another one. This is another small tri tripod. I, the only thing I like about this is that ball and joint. I think that's a great idea. But this right here is very precarious to put your phone in. And if you unscrew it too much, the whole thing falls apart. The thread's not very long. It doesn't have a good cup size and the legs don't go out enough. And so it's very top heavy when you put a phone in it. I came across this one and it kind of became one of my favorite. And you can put this on a tripod stand and then slip your phone in like this. You turn the knob, slide it down, tighten it. And it's quite, well, I didn't tighten it super tight, but it's quite um, firm. It works really, really well. And I actually used that design to make my wobble, my monitor wobble, blah, my monitor wobble reducer. <laughs> I used the same design for that, that kind of idea. So I really like this. However, again, it doesn't hold a phone very deep. So if it has a thick case or something on the back, then it's gonna be difficult. But I finally came across this one. This was my favorite. And I'll put the designers link below. Well, all of the designs are linked below. But this again uses that auger system. I don't know if you'd call that an auger because it's not pushing anything through like a Traeger or something, but it's got a bolt, right? And it's spinning and pulling this shut. And I like this design quite a bit because it just works really well. It's quite tight. And when you put it on a phone, it's really, really tight. Only thing I don't like about this is again, this isn't that deep. And again, the joint that this would connect to a tripod or an arm is on the side instead of the back, which would be more in the center of gravity of the phone. This was my winner. And I started with this and let me show you what I designed. This is the first iteration of my design after all the inspiration and thinking about all the different elements to this. Basically it uses this bolt system that easily closes a phone in. It works really well. It's very easily done. I actually had to learn how to do this pattern. This is called gnarling. I had never done that before. And I also learned to do a new custom thread without using the thread defaults in Fusion. And I did that using a coil. I'll put the video below of how I learned how to do that. I started thinking, what if this had a spring? What if this was spring loaded so that as you're pushing it down and you're letting it back up, instead of it just doing that, what if a spring pushed this back up? I realized I have plenty of room back here to put a spring in. And so I thought, let's redesign this a little bit and make it do just that. And so that's exactly what I did. I extended this area out and I put a notch here designed a little spring, put a notch on this side. So now it's spring loaded. When I close this, when I reopen this, the spring pushes it back up and opens it to prepare it for another phone, right? I also made sure that this gap here was large enough for a cell phone that had a case on it or something on the back like a puck. But then I ran into another problem. With this design, because these are printed this way, 
the layer lines of the print are going this way, which end up rubbing against each other and causing this kinds of friction, which is a lot of friction and actually can get stuck when it's trying to open up using the force spring. So I realized this really needs to be printed this way. And for me to do that without supports, I'm gonna make, need to make this into two pieces. But lastly, I also realized that this didn't even hold, this wasn't even tight enough to hold the phone. <laughs> so I designed it based off of my 16 Pro Max and out of 16 size, so it didn't clamp far enough. And there's some phones even thinner, so this needed to be reduced on both of these sides. And by the way, when you design a spring, which I had never done before either, um, you have to do some iterations. This one wasn't strong enough in any way. This one was way too strong and hardly had any flexibility. And this one was just right. This is my Goldilocks spring. This is all printed in PETG, which has a little bit more spring and movement than PLA. So I highly recommend using PETG for this part. And so this is my final version. As you can see, it works just fine. It's spring loaded, it opens up. These have been reduced in size. I actually gave a little more fillet over here to strengthen this area. And I reduced the angle of this so that I don't get so many uh, overhangs on, in this piece here. When you open it up completely, if I was to take this apart, and this slides off like that. So these were all printed like this on the print bed with no supports, no hardware required, no supports. So that was what I was going after. Super easy to assemble. Just slide that in, slide in the spring, then slide this in here. Make sure the spring fits into that back. Put this bolt in like that. Slide in your phone. And now that is very, very tight. And then with this threaded spot here, I can attach that using a bolt like this. That can be put into several of the different arms. Turn it this way, pivot it up. It's pretty good. You know what we could do to make an improvement though? Do you remember this design that had a ball and socket? What if we implemented one of those into here also? Let's go design that. Now I've got these three extra parts in my existing bolt. Let's put this together. We're gonna to put the ball in here. And that's gonna be our adjuster as far as what position we want the phone to be in. Let's go ahead and attach that like this. All right, now that gives us way more flexibility in this position so we don't always have to move the arm. A lot of times we just wanna make small incremental changes and then you can tighten up that socket using this. Wouldn't it be cool if this worked for the other two arms as well? The problem with this arm is that it actually requires having an actual bolt. It's got a nut inside this little slot. I'm gonna have an M8 bolt that's gonna fit in there. So I decided to actually just create an extension for this like that. So let's go ahead and put that together. And there you go, that should work just fine. So this arm, if you remember, it uses a little bit bigger bolt. And so we're gonna to have to make the socket on the back bigger. So now I've done that. I've made a new piece just for this. We're gonna screw this onto our cradle, get that nice and tight. And then let's use the existing bolt that came with this arm and let's put that in. So now that works great with this one as well. So if you have this arm, you can get that piece and uh, it'll work for this arm. So that is the story of my obsession on cell phone arms and why I kind of went down this rabbit hole. But you know what, here's the thing. I learned a ton and I'll put the links to those videos that I learned from below, but I had a blast doing this. I hope this video inspires you to do something creative today. 
If you have any interest in getting this design, it's free. You can download it. The link is below. If you have access to a 3D printer, you can print that out. If you like this video, you're probably going to like this video also. It's kind of in the same vein as this one. My name is Zion and I'll see you next time.